Vikram, we understand you as a writer, we know you as a poet, but we know that you do a lot of things with your hands. We know you do a lot of sculpting work, and this is the product of a different kind of energy you brought into the space on walls. So how did it come about? Because what I'm seeing is very interesting and the use of colours is fascinating. Well, uh, curiously enough, uh, since you mentioned the use of colour, originally my interest uh, in the visual arts was somewhat abstracted from colour. Right. I concentrated on calligraphy, pure and simple calligraphy, uh, through my interest in things Chinese. So what you saw really in calligraphy, uh, when I did it, uh, was just black and white, right. black on white, with the slightly luxurious touch of red for your seal at the end. A slightly anomalous touch, which gave a different kind of vibrancy to it. But then, after practicing calligraphy for several years, this seal began to intrigue me, and I began to wonder if I couldn't have more color. And that's how my love affair with color began. Calligraphy, painting, whatever you call it, there's no denying the fact that for Vikram Seth, creativity flows in his veins. Whether it's prose, writing, sculpting, painting or even singing. There are two ways of looking at it. The changing of gears is always considered, you know, go from first gear to second gear, after that's fine then go to third gear. I'm not sure that's always the way that it works in the artistic sense. For example, when I was an economist and I wrote a novel, I wrote a novel in verse. Yes. Or without having written a short story, I immediately plunged into writing A Suitable Boy. I hadn't even written a short story, let alone a novella. So I don't think that there have to be necessary phases of gradation when you, uh, when you transition from one art form to another or from one activity like trying to do a PhD in economics to becoming a writer. I think sometimes it's just worth plunging in at the deep end and seeing whether you swim or sink. My question is, there's so much happening in the mind all the time, Vikram. I'm right. sure that's the case with you. And then to give it some kind of form. I think you're right. I mean, there's always a lot happening in the mind. But the point really is, when you're doing something, is to really sink into that thing. You can't sort of say, oh, well, I'm versatile, so therefore in this thing, no, it's like the Arjun's eye, the eye of the bird thing. You have to concentrate. Mm -hmm. If your mind is on a hundred different things, frankly, it just won't come off. And so the aim is to have a seamless flow of thought, regardless of the art form. The journey itself, most enriching. Which is the most interesting part of the process? of coming out with something because a lot goes on like we discussed yeah. but which is the most interesting part the process of doing it the germ of the idea where does it all interest you most I'm interested in a lot of the processes and it's a different kind of interest when the germ of the plot comes then there's a sense of surprise whether it comes from listening to a piece of conversation on a bus you know you two will marry a boy I choose mm -hmm. you know I'm sitting in a bus I listen to that and from that tiny germ between mother and daughter, a book of 1500 pages is born. But at the time of the seeding of that germ, I didn't know the book would be so long. Right. Or when I'm staring at a, or I'm looking at someone who's looking at the serpent, and I think, why is that man staring at this body of water? And then an equal music is born. Or a little inspiration from reading Pushkin. And the, so there's that kind of pleasure. Then there's the pleasure of developing the characters and the plot or the theme of the poem or whatever the case may be. And then it's the shaping of it. Because things don't come felicitously to you automatically. No. You know, you may, may seem articulate, but there's a lot of, you know, <laughs> as Robert Frost said, um, easy reading is damned hard writing. So there's some work involved and there's the pleasure of the craft. And finally, now this is a very strange one, is the pleasure of revision. Oh, you enjoy that? It is, it's interesting, it's like It's a, part of the process, but I'm just wondering because some people just like to do their work and forget about it. I'll tell you why I like the pleasure of revision. It's because while I'm writing, I don't look back. So when I'm uh, following the general arc of the novel, I don't go back and revise, go back and revise. I let the whole thing come out in one continuous arc, rather like I was saying. Yeah. The alien, the, the intention should be continuous. Right. And then after that, I go re revise it. And then it's almost a question of surprise. 
when I was writing a suit of a boy, for instance, I wrote the first part. Then after a period of research and tried to enter the characters of the lives, I wrote the other 18 parts. When I went back to revise the first part, I thought it's almost like someone else has written it. I came back to it with a kind of surprise and freshness and I quite enjoyed, you know, uh, maro um, wrestling it into, into shape. Now here, if you look at this painting, where did the idea come? Did it come from the iconic shape? Did it come from the words which say Pyasa Pyala? Did it come from the colour? Did it come from the Ras, whether you can call it Karuna Ras or Shingar Ras or whatever the Ras is? What was the seed of it? How did it develop? How did it come about? When I first began thinking about this, I began sketching things really, people say at the back, on the back of an envelope. In this case, it really was <coughs> on the back of a very large A4 envelope, which then became an A3 in effect. And I started sketching things, combinations of bottles and so on. Now, if you look at these, at the word Pyasa and Pyala, which are words from Bachchan's Madhushala. Huh? Yes. Tu hai mera Pyasa Pyala, or whatever. Oh, mehu tera piyasa piyala. I think that's what mehu tera piyasa. And uh, and uh, look at the dandas of the year and the a, uh, aki matra, the sir or the la, because they only differ in one letter, sir and la. Right. And then move them upwards, and what do you get if you take the division of the bottle? You get five lines. That suggests a musical clef, like Western music is done. Yes. And then instead of drawing notes, I just drew a single quarter note rest, which looks like the Hindi Akshar Kh. Right. So it's just as if there's a rest, a pause, a rest, a Kh. So Pyasa Pyala then leads to that. Then you think, where is the Pyasa Pyala? So at first I placed it here, then I moved it. You can see some palimpsestic effects. Yes. And I made it, put it there. Yes. I thought it's too bold, it's right. too obvious. Right. And you can see something pouring into yes. it. But it's not obvious. It's yes. not like it's not an illustrative yes. text. It's not jumping at you for sure. And then finally when you move back, Another fugitive shadow turned up there and a bottle which is sleeping off yes. perhaps what it's had the night before there, the dreaming earth. And against that I've written, if you can uh, see it very closely, yeah, there is. Piyasa. Now Piyasa can mean two things, that he's drunk, either right? he's drunk or like the beloved, right. Piyasa. So now, did the words come first? Did the idea come first? Did the shape come first? Did the choice of sap green versus emerald green versus hookers green versus you know obsidian? What what colors ideas came first? At what point? At what point do they merge? Which inspires which? And then finally, after the painting is over, maybe some months after the painting is over, comes a couplet, which is like a share, which is a two-line couplet which says, "The emerald cup, the music high above." The dreaming earth, all thirst for hidden love. That just flowed. It, it came. Just came. I, it just came. So the elements of the painting, whether it's the cup, the music, the dreaming earth, and the hidden love, the piasa, with this solid married couple here, whether that, and then maybe a drop or two, and something just trickles down by mistake. And the question is, should I leave it? Should I not leave it? Right. And in this case, I left it. So at some point, you have to be very open. At some point, you have to be very focused. Focused. I, I was afraid you'd say closed, but <laughs> you said focused, and that's exactly right. So going ahead from here now, what yeah. are we going to see Vikram Say do? Well, the, the, first thing, plan? the first thing you've got to see me do, and I've already, I'm steeped in it. And if it hadn't been for the fact that suddenly sculpture and painting forced itself into my consciousness, I would have been writing A Suitable Girl which after 20 years of saying, no, 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 that's too boring, I suddenly thought, what if I set it in the present? Mm -hmm. And I became enthusiast, enthused, enthused about it. Lata, who was 20 when I left her, yes. is now about 80. Yes. Looking back and looking forward it's at quite life. Quite a quantum leap. Yeah, quite a quantum leap. <laughs> and India, which was in its first general election, might be in its 15th, 16th, who knows where, by Correct. the time I finish the book. So the changes in the country, the changes in our consciousness, uh, the changes in a fully lived life. And Lata will not only look back, she'll also look forward a bit. And who is the suitable girl being sought for? Maybe for her grandson, who can't really communicate. Is that a maybe? I thought that was fairly established. 
It's Look, not for the grandson. Let me put it this way. The suitable girl is rather shy, doesn't much appreciate being discussed in public. I see. Even if between Vikram. <laughs> and uh, so perhaps I shouldn't talk too much about her. Sure. But can we expect it in 2013? Is that... Uh, have you set yourself a deadline? Uh, my publishers are seeking to set a deadline. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, and you're refusing to... Be... No, no. I, I'm not refusing. I'm just... Uh, you know, saying, ask the muse. You know, the muse is the most important part of this, right? I'm just a puppet, right? Right. So, uh, I think the safest comment is not to comment. <laughs> um, and also, quite frankly, That's... quite frankly, I, I, uh, I don't really think it helps me much to talk about or analyze a work. Analysis is a robust procedure Fair. and creation is a much more fugitive procedure right. and I don't think the two marry very well.